Good evening. This is the Guyana Learning Channel's news in capsule from Monday, November 1, 2021. In the news tonight, Ministry of Human Services and Social Security launches a short story competition. Sod turned for 150 million Amaya milk plant at Onverwat, and public servants to get retroactive salary increase. In the world of sports, Kishore London new champions of Guyana Open regionally. St. Lucian appointed as a new CARICOM Deputy Secretary General. And internationally, Brazil senators back criminal charges against Bolsonaro. With the details, I am Danelli Singh. The Human Services and Social Security Minister has announced the launch of its short story writing competition for young writers on the topic of child safety. This new initiative forms part of the Every Child Safe campaign that was launched by Minister Dr. Vinji Prasad in September, which seeks to tighten the grip on issues surrounding child abuse in Guyana. In a release on Sunday, the ministry stated that the age group being targeted in the competition is 12 years old and under, with the word limit being 250, adding that entries being sent to the ministry must be completed with the participant's name, address, age, and contact numbers. The 10 best stories will be published in a special book produced by the Human Services Ministry and young authors with winning entries receiving prizes. Submissions, the release stated, can be made at the Ministry's East and Lamaha Street, Georgetown location or emailed to prmohsss at gmail.com. The deadline for a submission is November 11. This piece was extracted from the Guyana Times. Last Friday, several senior government officials joined the owner of the Amaya Milk Company for a sod turning exercise to signify the commencement of the construction of a multi million dollar state of the art processing facility. The facility, which is being constructed at Onverwat, West Coast Barbies, by Canadian based investor Umkar Sharma, saw the initial investment of $150 million. In March of this year, a Memorandum of Understanding was signed between the Amaya Milk Company, the Guyana Office for Investment, Go Invest, and the Ministry of Agriculture for the construction of the facility. While delivering remarks at the sod turning, Minister Mustafa said that the investment represents a remarkable opportunity for the transformation of Guyana's traditional dairy industry. The project is expected to be rolled out in two phases, the first phase focusing specifically on the production of pasteurized milk. Phase two, which is expected to commence within two years, will see the company producing other milk-based products, such as yogurt and flavored milk, specifically strawberry and chocolate, among other unique flavors. Initially, the plant will be able to produce 100 gallons per day. This amount could later increase to 800 gallons a day, depending on the supply from farmers. At capacity, the facility is expected to make in excess of $75 million per month in direct payment to dairy farmers in Region 5 and 6. It is expected that the construction will be completed making way for Amaya's products to be on the shelves of local supermarkets by April 2022. With the introduction of Amaya's products to the local market, it is expected that Guyana's milk import bill, which is currently estimated to be US $35 million per annum, will see a significant reduction. This piece was extracted from the Department of Public Information. Public servants in Guyana have been assured of salary increases at the end of this year. His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali reaffirmed his government's commitment to increase salary this year. The comment was made during a press conference on Friday morning. Vice President Dr. Barrett Jagdio said as early as January, the $10 billion has been set aside in Budget 2021 for the revision of wages and salaries for public servants. The Guyana Public Service Union, GPSU, subsequently wrote to the government requesting talks on this matter. Regarding talks with the GPSU, the president said the matter will be addressed by the Ministries of Finance and Public Service. Dr. Ali had first made the commitment to public servants during his August 2 press conference, commemorating the culmination of his first year in office. According to the president, the salary increase will be retroactive. This piece was extracted from the Department of Public Information. And now in the world of sports. After two days of intense rivalry at the country's lone golf course at Lusignan, 
Avinda Kishore and Chanel London were crowned new champions of the Guyana Open on Sunday afternoon. As the sun set on the sprawling East Coast Demerara facility, Kishore and London were outfitted with a sponsor's jacket, a symbol of supremacy at the country's premier golf tournament, much to the delight of their cheering entourage. It was a second Guyana Open title for both winners who were understandably elated to lift the prize possession, topping a field of 76 competitors. This piece was extracted from the newsroom. And now for news in the region. Dr. Armstrong Alexis of St. Lucia has been appointed as the new Deputy Secretary General of the Caribbean Community CARICOM. He will take up the post from November 1, 2021. CARICOM noted that Alexis brings a wealth of experience to the organization as he previously worked for the United Nations Development Program, UNDP, the Commonwealth Secretariat, and in the public service of St. Lucia. This piece was extracted from Caribbean News. And now for international news. Brazilian senators have voted to recommend charging President J.R. Bolsonaro over his handling of the devastating COVID pandemic. A Senate panel backed a report calling for charges against Mr. Bolsonaro, including crimes against humanity, after 600,000 deaths from the coronavirus. The report has been handed to the chief prosecutor, a Bolsonaro appointee. The president has maintained he is guilty of absolutely nothing, but the crisis has dented his popularity. Brazil's death toll is second only to that of the United States. There is no guarantee this vote will lead to actual criminal charges, as the report's recommendation must now be assessed by Prosecutor General Augusto Aras, who is expected to protect the president. The report alleges that Mr. Bolsonaro's government pursued a policy of allowing coronavirus to rip through the country in the hope of achieving herd immunity. It described the president as the main person responsible for the errors committed by the federal government during the pandemic. This piece was extracted from the BBC. With that, we've reached the end of today's broadcast. Be sure to join us again right here on the Guyana Learning Channel for more educational news and updates. On behalf of the technical team, thanks for watching and remember to stay safe, Guyana.